Well, it's been dubbed the Drakensberg Davos. Leaders from all sectors have gathered for the Chalema Motlanti Foundation's Inclusive Growth Forum this weekend. The state of the economy, high youth unemployment, the need to improve local government efficiency featured in the discussions. So a reporter there, Heidi Jokas, has been following that forum this weekend. Good morning to you, Heidi. There has been so much coming out of this forum, but for you, what is the one issue that has really hit home that really feels like the most important? Good morning, Sally. Uh, I think the biggest thing is the fact that uh, we need to start implementing. It's one of the biggest themes that have come out of this uh, inclusive growth forum hosted by the Khalema Mutlanti Foundation. Uh, but let me stop talking and actually introduce my guest, Dr. Hernando de Soto, a Peruvian economist. Thank you so much for your time, sir. We really do appreciate it. Um, this year's theme for this inclusive growth forum hosted by the Khalema Mutlanti Foundation uh, speaks about strengthening local government and local economies. You touched on a very important uh, part that really South Africa is grappling with, and that's dealing with corruption. Uh, if you can just share your thoughts on how we need to deal with corruption to actually uh, strengthen our local government and our local economy. Well, corruption um, isn't necessarily tied to the relationship between local and national. Corruption is, is, is tied to uh, government officials or politicians selling favors. I mean, that's what people buy. People buy the title or the license to own something or to do something. And since government is the sovereign and awards these rights, whether it is to uh, dig a mine, uh, create a, a hydroelectric plant, uh, pump out oil, you pay for that. And that's where corruption comes. So the question is, does the fact that you strengthen the local to a degree actually help you control the buying and selling of favors, uh, which are in the name of a government or are supposed to be a public good? And uh, I suppose to a certain degree it does. But essentially corruption means that the more people have clarity in title, that we know who really owns what, and that there are, uh, uh, are counter-intuitive and rivaling interests, the more you're going to be able to control uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. But it isn't only by localizing things, it's also by globalizing things, because globalizing things gives you standards. Standard means you can compare one thing to another. So you need to do things at both levels to stop corruption. And then, uh, Dr. De Soto, perhaps any advice for South Africa and, and you know how they should deal with this massive issue of inequality and poverty um, in terms of transforming the economy? We know that that's one of the biggest issues that uh, this economy faces when it comes to the inequality gap and the poverty gap that we're seeing. Well, it's uh, relatively simple. When you're talking about inclusiveness, you're not talking about bringing poor people to South Africa. They're already here. You're talking about globalizing them. That's where you're including them. That's where they're excluded from. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to local, it means that local isn't the only reply. You want to globalize them. Uh, everybody's going local and local and local, but uh, there is no prosperity in local. Local um, markets essentially involve very small quantities of people to, to deliver to. The people who get rich are those who can scale up. Mm -hmm. The people who can be in touch with wider markets. And so uh, you, what you need to give equality is get the right to uh, be able to benefit from the inputs and exports of various markets. I mean, look around you here. Uh, if there's a camera there that's filming me at this moment, it must have, well, I don't know, 1,900 bits and parts. Uh, you can't put 1,900 bits and parts uh, uh, on a local scale. You probably, the aluminum there comes from, I don't know, Venezuela. The iron in there can come from North America. There's plastics, that's oil from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the lady there has got cotton uh, in her pants. That means that she's probably gotten it from Egypt or Peru, and she's got uh, beautiful earrings, and they probably come from Kenya. I mean, the whole world is made up of a variety of global things. So there is no way that you're going to get any prosperity going locally until you globalize, which doesn't mean you're not going to 
you're going to drop your local agenda, but I think it's the other way around. You're going to look at the locals and you're going to offer them to get into market. That's what you're doing about inclusiveness. You're saying you're going to include them into global society. Speaking of including, uh Land reform remains, remains a big issue in this country and uh, I know you touched a little bit on title deeds on Friday when you uh, delivered your keynote address. Um, how important do you think it is for South Africa to deal with this land reform issue that we have? Oh, it's crucial. I mean, we live on land. Uh, everything we get here is on land. Everything we're talking about, the bricks, the flowers, <laughs> everything's on land. So what you do with land is very important. Uh, the second thing, not everything you get from land is in the land itself, but it's a point of reference. For example, to get me to this interview, somebody asked me, where are you going to be? So if I didn't know where I was going to be on the land, I wouldn't have come here. And if they didn't tell you you could hold an interview here, we couldn't have had that interview. So all our points of reference have to do with lo location. You want to make a deal with someone so as to produce whatever it is, get a conversation going, um, get knowledge going. Uh, you need uh, to have people's identity, and people's identity are always referred to places on the land. Uh, whatever your name is, uh, my name, for example, is DeSoto, which means Bush. Obviously, my folks came from where there's Bush. A man called John Townsend lived at the town's end. So all our points of reference that allow us to identify ourselves come originally from land. Mm -hmm. When you take a credit card and you put it into a slit, and you've passed over, what you've passed over is your identity and your location and your entitlements. You haven't passed money over. So it's information that does uh, the trick if you want to. So the important thing is when you look at land, make sure that it's not only about the physical thing of land, but all the metaphysical it, things it allows you to do, how it allows you to trust somebody because it makes you accountable. Somebody doesn't... Uh, comply with the commitments of a contract, you've got to know where they are located. Mm. So the important thing about a title is not only the fact that it excludes other people from something you own, but it allows you to interact with the rest of humans. And uh, there's a computer there. I happen to know that uh, in a computer you've got actually more than 2,200 pieces, and they come from at least 23 countries. So titles are very important because that's where you begin to understand everything. By the way, it's even coming here. The first thing I was asked when I went through um, uh, immigration uh, by South Africans was, uh, let me see your passport. And I said, yes. And when they were talking about it, I said, I'm delighted to be here. You know, I'm from Peru, this, that, and the other. And they just told me, look, uh, it's very interesting what you're telling me, but <laughs> can I just concentrate on your passport? Because my passport is a title that says everything you want to know about locating me and where I come from. So nothing more important. If you have a title that is only known locally, you are restrained, confined to a very small market and you'll never make it. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dissut. I wish we had more time, but unfortunately we've run out of time. Uh, that is uh, Peruvian economist Dr. Hernando Dissut just speaking to us about uh, some of the issues that South Africa faces with and uh, some of the solutions, specifically about land reform. Sally? Thank you, Heidi. And also, just uh, while I've still got you there, um, the, the conference is wrapping up this morning, and I understand there's lots of sort of summary sessions underway, but there have been some fantastic speakers. We've listened to the views of Alec Irwin on ESCOM and the way forward. We've, we've heard from ABC Jonas, Pravin Gordon, and many, many others. And you were saying to me earlier that now is the time for implementation. That's the big push. But if I had to ask you for the main issues coming out of the conference, could you give me a quick summary? Uh, so basically, Sally, what we understand from this conference is the fact that, uh, you know, issues are still uh, at local level, local government, local municipalities. And an interesting conversation that we actually had uh, with the Deputy Minister of Cocteau was the fact that they've introduced this new uh, service delivery model, uh, which was started off in September of this year, introduced by President Cyril Ramaphosa, trying to deal with the fact that they want, um, you know, this new model to uh, introduce more resources and capacity to local municipalities because uh, if you look across the country we do have
have issues when it comes to local municipalities and basic service deliveries that uh, South African citizens uh, don't have because there's just not enough resources and capacity when it comes to uh, when it comes to these local municipalities. So that was one of the big things that came out yesterday. Uh, there are feedback sessions currently happening in the plenary hall, um, and uh, we're actually going to be interviewing Professor William Gumede from WITS uh, that will give us some kind of feedback of uh, you know these various themes and issues that have been brought to light. ESCOM is a very big one that they're trying to deal with. Uh, how do we stabilize the power utility that has a, a debt of over 400 billion rand? So those are some of the pressing issues that have come through, Sally. Thank you very much. That's Heidi Jokos there. She's reporting from what we're calling the Drakensberg Davos.